For just £599, you can get the brand new entry level base model Mac Mini combined with the free version of DaVinci Resolve. But is it any good? And could you use it as your only editing computer? We're about to find out. Now we are only talking about the free version of DaVinci Resolve in this video, but if you want to know how it holds up in the studio version, maybe hit that subscribe button because there'll be another video coming later this week. What up folks, my name's Alex, Mr. Alex Tech, and I've actually picked up the base model Mac Mini, and I'm gonna try using it as my main rig for the next couple of weeks. As mentioned, this base model is available for 599 pounds, the same in dollars in the US. You get a 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 core neural engine for all of your AI stuff, 16 gig of unified memory, or RAM as it's more commonly called, which is actually quite nice, 16 gig, Previous generations, the minimum was 8 gig. That's gone. Everything starts at 16 now, which gets a thumbs up from me, and just 256 gigs of SSD storage. Honestly, that's kind of the big stumbling block. That's the main issue people are going to come across because 256 gig generally isn't enough. Fortunately, this Mac Mini has five in total USB type C ports, three of which are Thunderbolt 4. All of them are capable of up to 40 gigabits transfer speeds, which means providing you're using some decent external SSDs, you should be okay because you can store all of your media on these, just plug them in via Type-C and run all your media off that. So yes, it's 599, you are gonna have to buy some external SSDs. It's a little bit more, but hopefully you've already got some lying around. I actually went one step further and for about 160 quid, I bought this Ugreen external NVMe SSD enclosure, that was about 60 quid, and then I bought this two terabyte NVMe SSD. So I'm gonna be running everything off of that. It's really, really quick, it runs at about 3000 megabytes per second, both read and write. So it's actually quicker than the internal SSD anyway. So for 160 quid, I've kind of upgraded my Mac mini from 256 to two terabytes. Winner. But the main question, how does it all run DaVinci Resolve? Well, stick around because I'm gonna show you pretty chilled out, casual kind of real life, real time look at how the free version of DaVinci Resolve runs on the new Mac mini. I'm also recording everything externally so the performance won't be affected. Now the first thing to show you, startup times. So DaVinci Resolve isn't currently running. I'm gonna hit the button on my stream deck now and the loading screen's on my other monitor, so that's actually on now. It'll load in a second on the main screen. There it is. So however long that was, not very long at all. So when it comes to starting your edit, actually getting into DaVinci Resolve is really nice and quick. Now, the first thing I did to test this was I dropped a massive project in there and then just jumped on to see how responsive it felt. And I was really, really impressed. So I'm actually gonna replicate that now so you can see it for yourself. So on my external SSD, I've got this free demo DRA. That's a DaVinci Resolve archive file. And it's massive, it's 110 gig. It's full of different timelines and different media files. There's 4K, there's all sorts of stuff going on there. What we're gonna do is, this is all in real time. This project doesn't yet exist within DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna drop that in there. That's gonna import it and link it all. And we're gonna open it up and we're just gonna go cut page, source tape, which is gonna compile all of the, the media on one big timeline. And look at this. This is 4K. Well, I think pretty much everything in here is 4K. This is some anamorphic, that's actually 6K. This is 4K, there's some long GOP, there's some all intra, there's some 265 4K from Osmo Pockets. And just look how responsive this is. It's really, really quite impressive. And I know all we're doing is reading it, but the fact that it's able to read this so quick and give us such a responsive UI is really impressive. And what we can do is just grab all of these. I've got a 4K timeline ready to go. Drop it on there, jump to the edit page. Let's just zoom out a little bit. Whip around this timeline really quick. We can then start doing some cutting along here. We can do some ripple deletes and get rid of some of this stuff. We can give this one a click. What is this? This is H.264, 10 bits, 422, 30 frames. And we can just zoom this in and do the rotation, maybe mess with the pitch, whatever. Just blasting around this timeline, buttery smooth. So that everyday usability initially feels really impressive. But how does it feel actually kind of cutting up and working on a timeline? So we've got an Ultra HD 
30 FPS timeline right here. We've got a bunch of OBS. This is all 4K OBS recordings. And once again, we can kind of trim through this really quickly with no real issues. And then we've got my main cam. Once again, this is all H.264 10-bit 422. This scrubs through really nicely all 4K. Now, this is the kind of the workflow I actually do in my day to day. I've got to link up some external audio. So let's do that first and see how quick that works. Auto sync, waveform, we'll sync that. Nice and quick. It's actually quite long as well. This was, how long? That's 31 minutes. So that's just linked up all the audio, super quick. We can jump on here. It's really nice and responsive. And if we were to just go through, and once again, we just do some cuts and some ripples and some really simple stuff. That's too much, we want some more of that. And there you go. Now, if we grab that OBS stuff, change the position, and we've pasted that along our timeline. So we've got still got our main 4K. We've also got some OBS 4K running picture in picture. So it's having to read and display both of those. And once again, real time, 30 frames, and it'll play back with no issues. Just out of interest, I did another couple of layers of that OBS. So we've actually got three of those OBS and the main, and it's still not skipping a beat whatsoever. Now there's not too much in this, but it was just a general vlog. I didn't have to color grade it because I shot everything with a LUT built in. But we've got some simple titles, some punch in, some overlays, some music in the background, some nice simple cuts. This is all 4K once again. And as expected, it's all running really, really well. The audio has a dialogue leveler on there just to balance everything out. So it's doing a little bit of AI stuff for us. And the whole timeline is really nice and smooth. We can jump into the cut page. That's nice. Edit page, color page. Everything's just really responsive and good to go. Even this 6K anamorphic here, what we can do is highlight everything. We can go to the clip attributes and we can de-squeeze this. Now this was all shot Panasonic Vlog. So we just need to change the color space. We can change this to be Panasonic. And now it all looks better and normalized. Drop this on this anamorphic timeline. Nice, buttery smooth once again. Color page, we can start doing some color grading, put my node tree on there, start messing around with it and job done. Now rendering and exporting is pretty pokey as well. It's pretty quick. It's not mind bendingly quick. It's not gonna compete with a big power hungry Nvidia GPU or anything like that, but it's actually quite impressive. So this 10-bit 422 4K project again, let's do QuickTime H.265, Ultra HD, 25 frames, optimized for speed, main 10, all of that good stuff. We will render this out and see what we get. And straight away, you can see that we're rendering this at about 100-ish frames per second. Four times real time on a 600 quid Mac Mini, which at the moment, I can't hear and it's not warm to the touch using a free version of DaVinci Resolve. That's not bad at all. And by the way, that entire eight minute project took just two minutes and 12 seconds, which is not too shabby. For another quick example, here is some Ultra HD once again. So 4K, this is all 25 frames, 10 bit from an Osmo Pocket which is usually quite compressed, so it can be quite difficult to edit. Once again, it's all nice and quick. There's no issues whatsoever with any of this. On the color page, I've got a nice simple node tree. We can kind of just mess around and do color grading, which again, even at 4K, is not having any real issues whatsoever. Bit of balance, maybe a little bit of contrast, saturation, temperature, let's warm this up. You get the idea, you can go through and do some nice simple color grading with no issue. We've also put a LUT on there just to see how that's looking. So there we go. We can copy all of that over to all the other clips. Again, all nice and responsive. Jump back to the edit page, super quick once again. And then if we deliver this one, again, Ultra HD 25, optimized for speed. Even with the color grade on, this is running pretty much the same speed. So all of this is 25 frames and it's all running out at 100 FPS. So again, it's gonna be about four times real speed. Then just kind of for fun and out of curiosity, I turned all of those clips into a multicam to see if that multicam would run smoothly as well. It dropped a couple of frames, but generally it was not bad. 
So that's seven angles of 4K. And as you can see, we can just swap the angles on the timeline without too many issues at all. And if that's what you're doing, if you're just kind of cutting things up, maybe you do vlogs or YouTube videos or, I don't know, GoPro stuff, Osmo Pocket things, and you're just looking to cut things up, have it really nice and smooth and not be waiting ages to do any renders, I can't really knock it. I don't really have anything negative to say about it from that point of view. It's really quick, it's really efficient, it's really quiet, and it just kind of does the job. And even if you start pushing it to do some slightly more complicated things, it still doesn't do too bad. So we're back on my vlog kind of timeline, and this is all Ultra HD once again. If we just pick an edit point, we'll go to the video transitions. Any of these kind of standard ones, like push, for example, is absolutely fine. You're not gonna have any issues with those. If we come down to like a spiral wipe, once again, it's all gonna play at real time. The only ones you will have some issues with are these fusion ones. Block glitch does start to drop a few frames. But again, this is at 4K. F brightness, flash, that one's pretty good. Disarrange, this is one of the trickiest ones generally. And that is really starting to slow down a little bit, but it's not too bad. You could speed that up by changing the playback to half, which honestly is still going to look fine. And it's just going to give it a bit more speed. So we're still dropping some frames, but it's not bad at all. So let's go grab some fusion effects. Binoculars. That one's absolutely fine. CCTV. Drop in a few frames but not too bad. Uh, digital glitch. That one's a more difficult one, and that one is starting to run into some issues. We're only getting a couple of frames per second. Again, you could speed that up by dropping the playback resolution down if you wanted to. Let's just try Paper Edge as one last one. You can't really see that until you make it a bit smaller. And that's absolutely fine as well. So the last one to try, Titles. Clean and simple. It's clean and simple no drop frames. The digital glitch, which again is usually one of the heavier ones, is going to start to drop some frames there. Elegant shadow, once again dropping some frames. But if we go playback, let's go half, see if this one works. Yep, that can now play that while maintaining 25 frames. And let's just do jitter. That one's no issues as well. And let's just do one more. We'll just have a real quick look at these stinger transitions. We've got blobs, real time. We've got circles. That's all real time. And generic label, real time as well. And then lastly, just to show you all of this together, here's one of my main timelines I did recently. There's loads going on here. We've got push-ins, we've got adjustment clips, we've got layers with images kind of popping in and titles and arrows and all sorts of stuff. And this is all 4K and it's still not too bad. It's not quite as smooth, obviously, because there's a few more bits going on. And if we hit play, like at the beginning where we've got my magic zoom effect going on, that's dropping a few frames. We've got some more titles going on, as you can see over here. So there are things that are slowing it down, but overall it's pretty workable and it's not too bad. We've got my magic zoom tool going over here, which actually works really, really well. That's nice and smooth. So we can put that wherever we like and it's doing the job quite nicely. So let's just see how long this takes to render. And that was completed in just under 13 minutes. Hey, it's editor Alex here. I've literally just finished putting this very video together in, I was in the free version, I've just upgraded it to the studio version so I can do the captions. And overall, it's been running really good. It's done a really nice job, it's been nice and smooth. I did end up lowering the proxy to half, mainly because some of the titles, some of the effects I was using were slowing things down slightly. But when that proxy was set to half, it was really nice, smooth, and easy to put this project together. Now make sure to check the pinned comment where I'll let you know how long this took to render. So as you can see, it's really quite quick and I'm really quite impressed with this little Mac Mini. If you're doing any sort of 1080p, you won't have pretty much any issues. You'll blaze through everything, drop titles, do multicams, drop effects and transitions and all that sort of stuff on there. When you're doing Ultra HD or 4K, you do need to be slightly more mindful of what you're doing if you're using titles and stuff, but it's still pretty quick. 
if you're just cutting stuff together and then doing some simple color grading and then exporting the videos, there's not much to say. It's really impressive. Now, I am gonna switch to this. All my future videos for the next couple of weeks are gonna be done on this entry level base model, cheapest possible Mac mini. So I'll keep you posted with my thoughts and feelings. I hope this video was useful. If you've been looking at picking one up, let me know down in the comments section below. Thanks for watching, take it easy. I'll see you next time.